hey guys I wanted to make another video where I wanted to make a follow-up video on the video I just made about how the Lord will never leave you or forsake you um, I kind of got into that and then I started ranting about the holiness movement so I want to just focus on that topic right now and I want to try to get through this quick and make a shorter video so I'm gonna go ahead and move down um, this is Genesis 9 and the reason I want to do this is because I want to show that a lot of the holiness movement and Lordship salvation teachings try to convince you that if you do something wrong, the Lord will just leave you and that you'll go to hell, that you have to earn your salvation. And when you sin, you don't know if you're actually saved. And if you do sin and you are saved, you might lose that salvation. And now the Lord just casts you out and you're going to hell. And that's just absolute torment. And it's not the truth because we're going to look at scripture and I'm going to prove to you that the Lord never did that to those who had faith in him. He never did that to those who, who called upon his name, who had faith in him, who trusted in him, who believed in him, who relied upon him. He never did that. And he won't do that. If he didn't do that in the old covenant, why would he do that now in the new covenant where we have so much, you know, greater closeness to him through the blood of Jesus Christ? So um, let me go ahead. And this is Genesis 20. Yeah, this is Genesis 9, 20. I mean, and, okay, this is Noah right after the flood. Then Noah began farming and planted a vineyard. He drank of the wine and became drunk, and then covered himself inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw, or Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. Um, the point I want to make about this is Noah ended up sinning right here. I mean, anybody would say that, you know, if you get drunk and, and you know, get naked, it's, you probably got too drunk, so people would call, consider this a sin. But the Lord, you know didn't leave him. He didn't punish him for this. And, and people would be like, well, yeah, after the end of the world, anybody would do that. Well, still, it doesn't matter. The point is, is he committed a sin and the Lord didn't leave him. He made a mistake. I, and I forgot to bring up Abraham. Abraham lied to Pharaoh and the Lord didn't leave him either. He punished Pharaoh, even though Abraham did, or, you know, lied to him about his wife, Sarah, being his sister. I, I should have brought pulled that verse up, but I'm not going to do that right now. But the point I'm trying to make is, and I hope you've already gotten it, is that the Lord, when he chooses somebody, when or when you trust in him and you have that anointing on you from the Lord, and we all have that through Jesus Christ now. We've all been grafted into this through Jesus, you know, into the promises of Abraham, into the promises given to all of, you know, Israel because of Abraham. Not that we're above them, but we've been grafted in like the olive branch. So since that's the case now, we have the same favor, and he's not going to leave us or forsake us. I mean, he didn't do it with a with Abraham when you know he lied to Pharaoh about his sis about about his wife, and he didn't do it to Noah when he became drunk. Okay, I'm going to move on to okay. This is Judges right here. I guess I'm not going to go in chronological order. I made this video and then I messed up, so I had to go redo it, and now it's all out of whack. But that doesn't matter. All right, so this is Samson right here, and I'm not going to read anything about this. You can go read the story. I recommend you go in to read the story of Samson. Samson was a man, and he, he was just like all other people, and he, he had problems with prostitutes. He brought prostitutes on multiple occasions. He, he got angry and killed people. He made vows that he had to do that weren't that, you know, we would consider pretty bad right now. The point was is the Lord didn't take away his strength for that. <clears throat> What happened was that one thing that he was told not to do was was reveal where his strength came from was what was his downfall. But the point I want to make then is the Lord just didn't leave him completely. He didn't really leave him at all. The strength left him and he was captured and he had to pay for that, you know, the, uh, you know, all the sin that he was doing out of a chastisement or, you know, it's just something that happens when you, when you sin. You'll eventually end up having to pay for that sin because sin is destruction. Sin is death. The wages of sin, are, you know, is death. But the 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 point I want to make is is the Lord never forsook him. He never gave up on him. He never, you know, cast him out and called him, you know, and said you're going to hell now. And that's what the Lordship Salvation and Holiness Movement kind of teaches is that you do that one sin, that one thought, and now you're going to on your you're on your way to hell. And that's not how the Lord is. He never leaves you or forsakes you. Even when you completely disobeyed like Samson, the Lord was still right there. Oh Lord, please remember me. He was still right there and granted him his wish. And his wish was done out of anger and wanted to be avenged to revenge, you know, have revenge on the others, on the Philistines. So it's not even always done in the right place in her heart. But you have to remember, it's not about you. Samson's strength wasn't gained by anything he did. So, I mean, 
It was always from the Lord to begin with. So that's what we have to remember. It, it's not about us. Yeah, there are consequences to sin, and we'll get into that. You know, I, I'm going to get into that with Moses. But it, he doesn't cast you out like an, you know, like an or, or a, you know, a, a child that he you know, doesn't love anymore, like an orphan. He, he's not going to leave you, you know, without him. He, you know, he he's a father. He's not an evil father. And I just hate this movement because it's just like it, it makes you think that. The Lord's harsh, and and I want to, sh you know, I'm, I'm going to get into that a little bit more here in just a second. Okay, so here's Numbers 22, 11, 12. I want to go ahead and read this in the New American Standard. Then Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock twice with his rod, and water came forth abundantly, and the congregation and their beasts drank. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you have not believed me to treat me as holy in the sight of the sons of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. Okay, so he, he told Moses to speak to the rock. But he struck it. He made the look Lord look harsh. He made the Lord, you know, because you have not believed me to treat me as holy in the sight of the sons of Israel. It's about him appearing, you know, in the wrong light to the people. And, and that's where the Lord gets the most angry is, is because once you're his, there's no one going to take you away from him. But when we do bad things and make others, you know, angry at God or question God, then we're damning them to hell because they don't want to pull you know, close to God because they look and say, I don't want anything that he has. He's a hypocrite. And now they, they blaspheme God and that makes God angry because he's the only one who can save them. You're already saved. But we set an example because it's the other people around us who aren't saved and we want them to come in so they're saved. So you see how making the Lord look bad to others is actually so... It, it, it's, one of, it's one of the things that angers the Lord the most is because it makes people not want to come to what can save them. It makes them want to run from what can save them because they don't believe there's anything different in it or that it's true or holy. And and, and that that's the, the problem. And I'm going to get into that later. I'm going to prove it even more when I get into the thing about David. I've already addressed this these verses, or the, the one in David, one about David. But uh, I'll get to that. Actually, I'll go to that now. It's fine. Um, So this is the verses, and I'm not going to read about this. You can go read about... Uh, David and when he took Bathsheba as his wife but this is right after this happened and Nathan rebuked him and you know David got mad about it but what David had done was he had taken Bathsheba the Uriah the Hittite's wife and he had you know got her pregnant and then had Uriah the Hittite killed to cover up his sin and this angered the Lord so the Lord said to David through Nathan, however, because this by this deed you have given occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child that is also born to you shall surely die. So Nathan went to his house. So see, there was punishment for the sin, but he never forsook David. He never gave up on David. He never took away the kingdom from David. And and we see this all the time. And even when he and it's just like when he took the kingdom away from uh, Saul, he never gave up on Saul, and he never told David, "Now go kill Saul." It's just sometimes we lose the authority that we have. Sometimes if you have a position of power and the Lord might take away that authority, but he never gives up on you. He never casts you into hell. It's just he, he stays with you. When he when you are his, he he doesn't break his word. <coughs> I mean, I don't know what else, what else to say. And, and what really angered the Lord was it made the enemies of the Lord give it, gave them an, an occasion to blaspheme, which ultimately damns them to hell because they don't want to come to the Lord now, the only one that can save them. They'll go run to their, you know, bells and whatever, thinking that well, they're just the same. And that, that's, that's terrible because those things can't, those idols can't save them. So this is where the Lord's anger comes in at. Yeah, what he did was terrible, but David's already saved. The people on the outside, though, aren't, and they need to be able, they need to see the difference so they can come to the Lord. This is why we go when we love and we want to appear different than the world, so people will come and be saved, and they're sealed. But th this whole teaching that, you you know, once you do this little thing that the Lord's just going to throw you into hell or you have to maintain some sort of, you know, perfection and uh, to be saved, it, that's just not true. The Lord said he would never leave you and forsake you. He didn't do it to David. He didn't do it to Abraham. He didn't do it to Moses. He didn't do it to um, Noah. Did I say Noah? The point is, is there's many people. And I'm going to get into, let's go to, um, I want to go to, I don't have it up right here. Let me, history. I think it's Galatians. Up, yeah, right here it is. All right, so this is Galatians, and I've read this verse before, 
But, but this is Paul rebuking Peter. This Cephas is Peter. So I'm going to go ahead and read. This is Galatians 2, 11 through 21. But when, Pete, but when Peter came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face, because he stood condemned. For prior to coming of certain men from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when he came, he began to withdraw and hold himself aloft, fearing the party of the circumcision. The rest of the Jews joined in joined him in hypocrisy, with the result that even Barnabas was carried away by the hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, see, Okay, now I'll continue reading. I said to Peter in the presence of all, If you being like a Jew live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how is it that you compel Jews to live like Gentiles to live like Jews? So you see, when you're not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, you can go and, and rebuke somebody, which rebuke just means to correct, to oppose, just you know, to it's a correcting thing. It's not always done like in, in a hateful way. It can be done in a loving way. You can rebuke somebody in love. So I mean I want to point this out, but the, the, the whole point of this is that even after the Holy Spirit, because you'll have some of the holiness movement say, well, all these were before the Holy Spirit. But here's Peter, you know, sinning after he received the Holy Spirit. And the Lord didn't cast him out. See, that's... I don't know what else to, to show you. Like, that, and I'm not trying to, like, glorify sin. But the truth of the matter is, anyone who is honest, as First John says, that anyone who is honest... You know, they're going to admit that they have sin and that they sin. And the Lord's not casting you out for that. But you have these crazy teachings that, you know, if you have that little bit of sin in you, well, then you're probably not even saved. And it's just not true. The Lord, and, and then they'll, on top of that, they'll make you worry about you going to hell. When the Lord said, He'll never leave you and forsake you. And this only applies to those who believe in Christ. This only applies to them. But most of the people here watching you already believe that. And if you don't, well, go ahead and start believing because you, you need to. But. It's. I don't have so really, really that much to say. I'm gonna that much more to say. I'm gonna um, read Jeremiah. What this is Psalms, one hundred three three. He who pardons your iniquities and heals your diseases is speaking of God. This is Micah seven eighteen. Who is a God like you who pardons iniquity and passes over the rebellious acts, the remnant of his possession? Who He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in unchanging love. They don't understand unchanging love, unconditional love, love that you know. This is something that the world will never understand. We, we, you can't understand it until you truly understand the nature of the Father. You can't. And you understand the nature of the Father through the Son. And, and that, you know, there's no greater love than this, the one that laid down, you know, one to lay down his life for his friends. You know, if, if Jesus Christ was willing to lay down his life for you, do you think he's going to cast you out for some little, you know, some sin? You know, I don't want to call sins little, but some sin that you do? He, he was willing to lay down his life for you. Like, come on, people. You, we don't understand love, and people who don't understand love won't understand the gospel. That's just the bottom line. And he, look, he, he, he pardons over your rebellious, rebellious acts. Re, I, I like the way it uses rebellious acts here because these are intentional sins. You'll have some holiness movement teachers say, well, he only pardons the um, you know sins you don't know about and the sins that you don't mean to commit. But any rebellious acts, that's you're not saved. Right here, rebellious acts. Intentional sins, willful sin. I mean, I don't need to say anymore. I'm going to go to Jeremiah 33 8. I will cleanse them from all their iniquity by which I, they have sinned against me, and I will pardon their iniquities by which they have sinned against me, and by which they have transgressed against me. He has always proclaimed he will pardon. He always wants to pardon to those who draw near. It's just some people don't want them to be, some people don't think they need to be pardoned. Some people don't want to be pardoned. It's always about, you know, pulling up underneath his wing and letting him do it for you. Letting him cleanse you. It's never about you trying to pardon your own sin. You can't do that. And you abstaining from stuff isn't what keeps you saved or what saved you. What saved you is by believing the gospel, by trusting in him and having faith in him, not by what you abstain from or what you do. And it's a new gospel, and, and the teaching is terrible, and it's just, I, I hate it, man. It, it destroyed my <clears throat> walk with Christ for, you know, for a while, and it's probably destroyed people's walk longer than me, but I just wanted to address this, and that's about all I wanted to talk about. I hope this blessed you. Let me know in the comments if, if, if anything wasn't clear, but anyway, guys, God bless and take care.